Good evening, everybody. This is Chris Peters and Kareem Mays. Welcome to the Entrepreneur Power Hour. Tonight, we have Mr. Josh Bendowski, Ron Lester, Francis Richardson, and Ron Tarleton. Tonight, we're discussing more than a suit and tie, how to make a professional image online. So, guys, what are your thoughts on this? <laughs> don't do this. Don't, don't do <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Ron. You look great. Stop it. Oh, hold on. I, I haven't even stood up yet. I, I, am, re I am ready for bed here. <laughs> hey, that's all right, brother. That's all right. <laughs> well, yeah. dress like, here's what you don't do. <laughs> Star, Wars, Star Wars sleeper pants? No. <laughs> I love it, bud. I love it. That would be funny in affiliate video. Do you have a problem creating quality content? Do you need help? Sorry, let me adjust my PJs here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the funny, the funny part is it really, you know, you see, you hear it all the time with people, like, especially in the early times when the, you know, the videos, you know, they'd say, oh, well, we you don't need to see anything below the waist they, you, <laughs> when you're making a video, you know. Yeah. Because it really, that's the nice thing with the video, as long as you can kind of hold yourself to a certain way and uh, hold your voice to a certain way. Nobody, no, nobody's uh, going to know the difference. I'll just yeah. do a right. suit jacket tie with just in my boxers. Like you can buy this product. It'll be good for you. <laughs> but it's not uh, as my anger guy cream. But it, I had some wisdom from actually someone I was working with and then I asked them a question. I said, you know, why is a suit and tie and all this stuff important? And I don't think that really makes a difference. And if I just walked, if I just made videos with a t-shirt, it would be all good. Right. And he's, and he said, the problem is you're online. These people probably may never meet you or if they do, it definitely they're going to get the first perception of what they see first. So a lot of people in movies, online videos, don't go for the person you are. They, they can't know who that is. They go for the person you appear to be, whatever that is. So that's all you have. Yeah, I was actually, you know, I was told a long time ago, it's, you're going to, you know, people are going to see you as you want them to see you, you know, who you, who are you? Um, you know, in, in a sales, you get it. that's going to be the biggest part right there is you're the person selling. Um, they're not buying necessarily a product per se. They're buying who you are, who you're um, emoting. You know what I mean? Totally you know? agree with you. And so, like, there, there, yeah, there are absolutely times you want to dress up the full suit and tie. I think it, it really depends on the certain situation. But... For the most part, I found that it's business casual khaki, and everything's cool that way. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to say everybody has to, like, hit up a suit. I don't have one on here. You know, I I actually looked at what different people, like JVZoo, ClickBank, uh, Warrior Plus, Gumroad, what they're doing. And they, they're not necessarily dressed to, you know, Armani suits, but they generally have either a button up or, or a blazer. This is kind of what I've seen a blazer, a button up. And I actually, they don't, they don't really broadcast below the waist, but if they do, it's generally like some khaki pants. And these are the guys who are selling, doing big sales on affiliate stuff, or at yeah. least perceived to be. So that, that's kind of my idea. I don't want to go so much that I have a suit every video and they're like, well, maybe this guy's fake. But I don't want to do it like I, I used to and just be like, well, I have a T-shirt or just an old sweater, and I'm going to throw that on, and it'll work out. Yeah. Actually, I think uh, when, you, when you're talking about uh, business for being a professional, um, it, it has nothing – I don't – I think it has more to do with you as a person, um, what you're wanting to represent. It has – I don't really think it's about appearance as much as anything else. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like uh, Josh gave us this idea. So, uh, Josh, maybe you could give us some experience, some wisdom on this topic. Yeah. We do video. Um, so I'll just share uh, my, my initial experience 
offline and then I'll kind of transition to that, how that really catapulted the way that I present myself online. I was, uh, when I was younger, I actually was a professional rollerblader. We used to travel the country. My best friend won X Games twice. And so I was, uh, I wore very baggy clothes, very grungy look to me, you know, because that's the whole world that I came from. And then when I graduated, I was, I graduated in digital media. And so I was a director. And as a director, you don't necessarily have to, I mean, you're on set, you know, you're working with your crew. And I didn't realize that in acquiring clients, I would take that same approach of you know, wear whatever I want, big hoodies and baggy clothes. And I was uh, talking to a CEO friend of mine. I have a tiny little office on the main floor of this business complex. And then there was a CEO that was uh, the CEO of a huge company. They had the whole second floor of a very large complex. I mean, this guy drove a, a little BMW, had a couple motorcycles that he would drive around. Uh, he even had one motorcycle that was branded. His company had it painted with his company logos and everything. I mean, he was making some serious money. And we had become friends. And he told me one, one day in the, in the hallway, and he said, Josh, you do realize that the way you dress dramatically affects how much money you're going to make. You will make way more money if you dress professionally. And it was a light bulb that kind of went off in my head. And I thought, wow, that's interesting. You know, all I have to do is change the way I dress to make more money. That's easy fix. You know? And so I did, and I, the, those of you who are connected to me on Facebook, you know that I, I, uh, I dress very professionally all the time. And that transitioned offline into a much better career path. I was able to influence people to purchase videos from me. I had more credibility based on the way that I dressed. And then I, I adapted that as the online world kind of came about. Um, I adapted that in my image online and so if you go to my image online and maybe somebody can flash up my Facebook page for a second uh, yeah you can I see can that. yeah go ahead and show that so you can see what I'm talking about I will buddy um, so what happens online is that when people are looking at you or for you um, or you've met them in person your online image can do one of two things and it will do one of these you can meet somebody in person and when they go and see you online, they are either going to think less of you or more of you. It's always going to go one way or the other, and there's no, there's no way to stop it. So you have an opportunity to make them have an increased perception of you, right? And so if you take that to all of your online encounters, and me personally, I, I earned the name... Uh, and I'm, a, I'm an internationally recognized marketer, but I earned the name as Mr. Professional. I mean, there's people all over the world who know me as Mr. Professional. And that has catapulted me into a lot of opportunities that I wouldn't have gotten if I had just been or just a regular video director hanging out there floating in the wind. It's like everybody I went to college with, you know, that's um, just out there doing whatever they're doing. And so it just really has a huge impact. And I used to teach a seminar, and I'll wrap up and give somebody else some time here, but I used to teach a seminar on, oh, don't show them my screen, show them your screen. I am showing them my screen. Oh, okay, my there screen. you go. Yeah. yeah. So what happens if I meet somebody or if, I, if I'm talking to a prospective client and they go and do research on me, which everyone does, that's, there's no way around that, and they see this. Now they're thinking, okay, I'm working with a, a major player, you know, a major marketer in the industry, whereas if they went to, I don't know, just go to, one of my friends' pages or something like that. They're not all they're not all in business for themselves, and I don't want to single out anybody that we both know. So just um, just go to my own first friends. Nobody that we both know. Here's okay, funny. Okay, whatever. Anyway, what I'm saying is, and these people aren't probably in business for themselves. But let's say I'm at a seminar and I meet somebody and I say I have the ability to increase revenues for you. And two of us. Let's say that. Brent here, Brett, and I apologize, Brett, personally, um, that I'm saying this about you because I, I imagine you're a great guy. But anyways, let's say that we both run into a prospective client at a seminar, and Brett here says, I have the ability to take your business to the next level. And I also say the same thing in person, and there's not a lot we can do to distinguish ourselves in person, but then this prospective client goes and does a little bit of research on both of us, and our price points are the exact same. Who do you think, just based on just this, they're going to choose to work. You. 
Well, I, I hope that's true, but I'm, I'm open to honest feedback. But the reality is probably me. And only because of my professionalism online. That's the only, in that, in that example, that's the only differentiator. I said our price is the same, and they, we both shook their hands. And so um, I do apologize to Brett. had to be the guinea pig on that one. But um, <laughs> that's kind of the, the, my statement as far as professionalism online is that it will catapult you. It will get you new business. It will make you more money. And uh, I'd like to toss it back to your court and see what you guys think. Oh, yeah, I agree with you 100%, man. Um, and, and I should probably go out and take some more pictures of me and my button up and put some more up on Facebook because there's a lot of pictures of me with my guitar and, and things like that. And um, so I mean, you make a lot of good points about that for sure. Yeah, there's a, there, there are some great, there's some other things that you want to think about in, in terms of being professional. You got. When you put on a suit and tie, and it actually does change who you change how you feel about yourself. That's, that that's no doubt about that one. And you'll see that when you, if you were doing a, doing a video presentation, you'll see a complete different person. Um, uh, but you really that's stuff you want to think about. You know, who who's your audience? Who's going to be, you know, if, for example, in your, if you're looking in the legal field, oh, you better, you better not even think about going anything less than business or excuse Absolutely. me, professional, you know, because I personally, I'm, I'm looking for somebody that's going to be really professional representing me. And so I think that, I think there are different uh, circumstances surrounding everything. Yeah, definitely. Because obviously it goes all back to that. It's not the person who you are. It's the person you're perceived to be and like, if I look at Josh's profile or if I look at somebody who's really serious, what am I going to think of? And I'm, I might have to do some work myself because funny enough, when me and Chris started, I think I just had like a regular t-shirt on and so did he. And then I was like, well, you know, I'm, I don't think this needs to, you know, go, you know, button up or chat. And then eventually started thinking, well, I want, even though maybe I'm not wearing this all the time, I want people to, take me seriously and there's no reason that I, I need to um, lie to people but there's also no reason why I can't dress up so I know Marsha Sortino has just joined hi Marsha oh, right and, on. Uh, I believe that's Leon so how are you guys doing uh, we're talking hey. about how to create a professional business uh, presence on the internet and uh, love to hear your feedback or some ideas? <laughs> well, I, I think I just got hurt. I, I just got finished listening to Ron. Is that your name, Ron? Mm -hmm. I yep. think I just heard what he had to say. And yeah, I tend to agree with Ron. I mean, a professional persona, whether you are in front of the camera or off the camera and just on a conference call, that's really important. It, it, it really does say a lot about who you are as a person. Do you have that professionalism that people are looking for? If not, they're going to be questioning, well, why am I listening to this person? I mean, this person doesn't even sound half, half as good as I can sound. So to me, that is very important. You have to know how to become professional. Totally agree. Whether you're in front of the camera and yes, it is nice. You do feel different when you're dressed up. I got to agree with you on that one, Ron. <laughs> but a lot of times we aren't dressed up, especially if we're doing it from home. But that's why it's kind of nice to have two ways to present yourself. Well, one, professionally, mm -hmm. dressed up, looking good, feeling good. Because when you look good, you feel good. When you know that you're having that professional image in front of the camera, you feel great and people pick up on it. Mm -hmm. They pick up on your, they per, pick up on that persona that you have confidence. No doubt about it. Well, I think you pick up on the fact that you ha are delivering that persona. It, you don't have hair curlers in your hair and you <laughs> Still shot is on the computer. Uh, you might look like a million bucks and you're still shot. But if you're looking 
in a mirror, do you deliver to yourself that, yeah, I look good. It doesn't hurt to be a little conceited. <laughs> you know, <laughs> in the mirror. Now, my mirror, I've got a haunted mirror because my mirror, I'm supposed to see a young foxy chicken. Every time I look in the mirror, I see a <laughs> old woman. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Francis. You're a foxy chick inside. We know you yeah, are. Exactly. <laughs> oh, well, she won't get the heck out of the way, you know, so I can see his pre me. And once a you foxy, hit 71, you can see 17. <laughs> <laughs> but what happens when you get a haunted mirror? I, I think for me, I've really come to understand this, and I, I am as defiant as it gets about this kind of stuff, but when Mr. Josh Bendowski, who I love, he's a good friend of mine and good friend of Kareem's, and he's on here as much as he possibly can be, I took his advice, and he gave me the advice. He's like, you know, Chris, you're a great guy. I know you love metal, and that's awesome, but he said, you know, have you ever considered dressing up so that you can get more viewers, more subscribers, and so people will take you more seriously. And and I was and and I took his advice and I thought about it. And I was like, yeah, you know, I just wish I didn't have to because I'm so against conformity and all of those things. So it was really hard to swallow. But then I'm like, no, I want this show to be successful. I want Josh to come back week after week, people like him that inspire me and that are helping us out and he's successful and I want to follow in his footsteps and so he it made a lot of sense to me and and now I dress up for every video I do and every broadcast we do so thank you for that Josh hey I'm just glad that you I um, will understood what I was trying to accomplish there yeah buddy thank you for that man it's, it's really interesting in in the difference between online and offline uh, it based on the different industries you're working in for example, like I just mentioned with the with the insurance, you want to dress as professional as possible. Or excuse me, as the attorney, you want to be as uh, professional as possible. Yeah. On the flip side, <laughs> certain other industries, like uh, if you're dealing with, especially on a consumer basis, um, as an insurance agent, <laughs> you're meeting meeting a consumer for the first time. Yeah, it's probably not a good idea to be in suit and tie. You want to be in khakis. You know, because otherwise you turn people off. I mean, how many times you, especially if it's like door to door, <laughs> you know, you can, you approach somebody at their door and you're in a suit and tie, they're thinking something bad right off the bat. <laughs> Go ahead, Francis. You were going to say something? Yeah, I was actually going to say last night uh, you and Kareem and I were talking and I made a commitment uh that I'm going to help uh, monetize uh, some issues that we're looking into come uh, in June. And actually it was because of the fact that I've seen a change in your presentation that made me feel comfortable in committing to that. Because I do perceive you now being more focused and dedicated to image that I'm a business partner. Francis, we can't hear you. You're too far away from your microphone. No, I'm right on it. Um, okay. Uh, there's, there's background noise. Yep, there is. So I can you repeat that please? I heard we heard some of that, but not everything. I said my my pivot point in deciding to commit to a kind of a joint venture was because I have seen a change in your perception and, and what you're putting across as far as an image. And uh, that, that did pivot my decision. Thank you. Now, well, Josh, there's the proof right there, buddy. <laughs> Absolutely, totally agree. Hey, there you go. I mean, it's it's almost like you can think like 
everybody here has gone to a job interview. I'm going to assume. If you haven't. Recently, uh, the one that would be most uh, appropriate to commit on the job interview would be Leon because he has been feverishly on job interviews all day. Okay. Go ahead, Leon, you're live. He may have technical issues. Yeah, yeah. is he on his phone? No, that's Marsha. Uh, oh, no, okay. there's Marsha. Okay. No, I don't know. I well, see a 617 number there. That must be Leon. Leon, if you can unmute, but the point I was just going to make is when you go to a job interview, you don't, obviously you don't wear a suit every day all the time. You know, it's not like you wear a suit to uh, just a party or you wear a suit to a casual dinner or something, or just to hang out with your friends. Maybe you do, but for the majority of people, even if they're going for a blue collar job, or it could even be a job at, in fast food, they're going to wear a suit. And it's the same thing here. <laughs> Obviously, people who know me know that, you know, I, I have my gym clothes on sometimes. I have different outfits. But when it comes to the power hour or something with work or if I'm giving a speech or it's a speech contest, I know I'm going to try and look as good as I can because I want people to have that impression of me that I'm out there to help them. And I can I actually, you know, it gets, it's really interesting when it comes to dressing up, you know, uh, this, this comes maybe from the military, but, you know, I'm, I'm a big, I got two things I'm re I really love about dressing up. First of all, I love silk ties, period. <laughs> There's nothing like having a good tie, really, you know, uh, I think if you, if you can do a tie right, you're, you're sitting pretty, pretty tight. But the second thing I like, I love uh, a polished shoes. You know, that, that, when I was in the service, that, that, that spit shine, that, I could do some magic with the shoes, I'm telling you. <laughs> but, you know, there's a certain, it's a, it's a pride. You take a pride in yourself. And that's really what uh, dressing up does. It, it's, you're showing your pride. I agree. I, I compliment my husband when he's in, suspenders and blue jeans and t-shirts most of the day and when he goes out uh he's always got a nice button-down shirt a nice fresh pressed pair of pants uh if we go to church he always matches his tie and his jacket and uh i tell him he's a clothes horse but he he just makes you feel like it's a person you don't mind being seen with anywhere. And likewise, I think when you're out with your husband, you owe it to him to not look like something the cat drug in and the dog didn't want because the <laughs> that you're, you're meeting is going to say, uh, well, doesn't your husband buy you any clothes, or is this the way your husband lets you live? Is this your standard? And your spouse is judged as well as you. So you owe it to your boss or your firm or your spouse, your boyfriend, whoever you're out with, your significant other, to show them off in a good light because they're judged by the company they're keeping to. Words of wisdom from Francis Richardson. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, well, unfortunately, people are going to judge you anyway. I wish the world wasn't like that. I think it would be a lot better. But people are going to judge you. So if they're going to, at least you might as well look like you can handle any situation that you are a professional. I agree with some of that sentiment. Um, 
I think it all depends on the situation. And I mean, being a musician, I think that's where a lot of my, my, my appearance comes from is because I'm so inspired by music and um, the freedom of it. So, but at the same time, it's having an appearance like I do now for our show, or if I was going to do a Toastmasters speech, or an, uh, some YouTube videos I'm doing with my awesome new Google Nexus 6 speed, which records in 4K. I mean, I've even upgraded my phone so I can make better quality videos. And that is all falls under the category of aesthetics. And when you're talking, when people are meeting me online, I don't want them to think that I'm, I'm a starving artist because I'm wearing all my metal stuff and I'm, you know, and that's, that's probably the persona the, that I'm giving off or the impression I'm giving off, which is unfortunate, but that's how it is. So I understand the compromise of it and I'm willing to do that. So, sure. Actually, I think, uh, I think a lot, maybe even your stature, you know, how you hold yourself, that's just as important as an appearance, you know, you know, yeah. especially, especially in a video, you know, if you're going to um, speak in a position of authority, you, you got to hold your head up. You got to be able to look straight in there and, and just, you got to emote, just say it as it is. Um, and that may not necessarily, that doesn't necessarily have to mean a suit and tie, but as a professional, uh, being a professional, you want to hold it. It really is from your waist up, how you hold yourself, how you speak. But in, in my, in, that's just my opinion. That's what I've always felt. I want people when they're talking to me, I want them to acknowledge me. I want them to hear me and I want to be listening to what they're saying too. Uh, that's a true professional's absorbing all that you know and they're listening and they're paying attention to everything um so i think that that's got a lot to do with when you're in a video that's what you want to what you want to present especially in terms of how you're presenting yourself yeah that's why i'm big on the whole public speaker of don't use filler words keep consistent speech use pauses because I've started watching these internet marketers even before I would watch Billy Mays I don't know if that's a good example or not that to me that's your pre-internet sales funnel basically instead of clicking on a funnel and then seeing a oh, buy now you need this they would have Billy Mays and I have this thing that wipes stains off which okay and I never really understood that product. And then you got to call now. And if you call now, we'll give you these bonuses. I'm sure when you called in and bought it, oh, here's more bonuses, you know, your equivalent of upsell. And, and to me, the, the sales process we'll hasn't changed. Model. All you got to do is pay separate handling. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's all these different things. But the way they present it, there's a problem you have the solution, you've had the experience, and by committing to whatever product or service, this problem will be solved. Yeah, your ice clean will do best for you. Yes, by, by, but wait, there's more. I, I would always, I, you know, one thing, if you're gonna be doing, if, you're do, if people are doing videos, I, I really firmly believe they gotta have a script, you know, have a something because, you, if you stumble, at least having practiced that script over and over. Same thing. It's public speaking. You have a speech. You're you're practicing that speech. You know, because when it comes down to the time for the cameras to roll, you don't want to sit there and uh, like what I'm doing right now is completely inappropriate. Like you know, no smoking, uh, no hand gestures. You know, you know, don't be doing that. You want to come on, uh, come on to do a presentation. Let it flow smooth, like you know exactly what's going on. It's in a beat rhythm. It's perfect. That's a professional. A professional is going to have that done. Yeah, you don't see salespeople. We have the newest way to create content. Um, uh, so uh, this content will be very effective in your in your business. Um, uh, because I've had man. This is the crazy thing, and I'm not saying any name. But I've had managers and people who were in fairly high positions in places I've worked. <laughs> and then they go to speak. They're talking about a new country or, or company di directive. 
and they're talking um, like, so uh, yeah, we have some new directives. And it doesn't sound bad necessarily to them maybe or to other people because they're registering. Okay, so they're <laughs> words. But if I, if I happen to record that and just play it back to them, which I wouldn't do that because it's rude <laughs> and I might not be employed for very long, but if you recorded some of those um likes the uhs, it's not just about the suit and tie like you were saying. It's about getting that speech down. It's about so nobody can hear any stutters, anything. You go, go, go. You know what you're talking about. Even if you don't know what you're talking about, you know what you're talking about. And the people who hear you know what you're talking about. Even if your product isn't the best, they'll be convinced it is. And it's very easy to fall into a trap where you're able to use filler words or you're uncomfortable speaking. And funny enough, I know Marsha, who's on the call with us, one thing I, I've been told by different editors, by her and the other editor, Carl, is sometimes there's a little bit of an issue with the ums and the ahs on on different classes and some of the filler words and pauses. Am I, am I right? <laughs> well, we do a lot of editing of the <laughs> uhs and the ums and, uh, you, you know, <laughs> that's a famous one, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that word is so famous. And I tell you, I edit out so many of those from the audios before we put them up on blog talk. So makes it, makes it bitch, a true editor hell. <laughs> 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 can you imagine? Can you imagine uh, seeing these presidential? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, I would be like such a great president. <laughs> yeah, at this point, I wouldn't be surprised. It'd be like, like I should... just trumped the Trump. <laughs> Bernie Sanders, what do you think of the economy? Well, like you know, it sucks. <laughs> but no, but to get off the political, there's a lot of people that, that just become customary where you ask them a question like, well, yeah, you know, uh, it's kind of like uh, that one time. I'm like, stop, stop. <laughs> Let me say this about that. Let me say this about that. <laughs> I'm going to answer your question. Let me say this about that. <laughs> Let me say I can see the call, guys, so I'm back. And then there's go goofy stuff and other funny, like, speech things that I that I pointed out to Francis that I think some people need. Like, some people say, instead of ask, asking a question, oh, or God. instead of program, program. And those may not be no, a big deal to me, but other people might go, what? Do they know what they're talking about? <laughs> I don't want to join his program. He called it a program. Program, man. Program. Actually, I had my wife had just told me a story that uh, she got called in at work the other day. She didn't realize she's doing this. And some, a lot of these places, you know, she's a customer service rep, so a lot of places now record everything. Yep. For quality and training purposes. Yeah. She, yeah. Had a, she had a client called in and uh, I guess my wife has a tendency of saying stole. <laughs> she said stole or stolen. She uh, stole. And so the, uh, her boss actually said, yeah, it's not stole. It's stole or stolen. <laughs> Can't, of course, it's, that's live. You know, there's no, no change in that. You've you got a customer on the line. Use it. The hard part is not when you're saying it, but if someone were to go and actually play stuff back and then you listen to it, I think there's where the interesting stuff would happen. You say, oh, do I really say that? or do? Because I had a lot of goofy things. And, and even my friends, like around Pittsburgh, they believe in efficiency. So they would combine and and that. Oh, yeah. And yeah. there's a lot of people who, when you're talking to them, and I just recently noticed this. It's almost been a nuance in speech here where they'll start explaining. They're like, well, if you fix your car – you have to, you know, change the muffler and tires in that. And I didn't think it was a big deal or the Steelers won in that. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> the problem is, okay, Kareem, that's funny, but what if you went to an interview and presented that? And 
a lot of them have, funny enough, like Josh was saying, nothing against blue collar jobs, but a lot of people who have not worked on their enunciation, worked on their speech, work on their personal presentation, I have noticed don't get necessarily, whether it's an online career or the best possible, if they're looking for a job type career. And while I'm making jokes about how you speak and how you hold yourself up and, and your confidence and how you actually present yourself, yeah, I do have to agree with Josh. It does impact the way how much you get paid because I found it in one of the books I have. Uh, I can get it on camera. How to dress for success, I believe it is. Absolutely. Yeah, I was actually. That's that's so true. Even in the, uh, I know in the insurance, you got you got a, a client who's a high net worth individual. Um, you know, the guy who dressed better is going you're gonna be more impressed by him. And so, you know, yeah, it's gonna make a big difference on how much you get paid. It's. I mean, it's rare you see a, a CEO, except well, maybe the CEO of Facebook. But it's rare that you see a CEO in a public image with just a t-shirt and cat like, hey, what's up, guys? Like, oh, I can't take this company seriously. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, had, I had a boss that uh, he, had a C, he was the CEO of the company. And um, when they were first starting off, he was slacks and he had a, a just a blazer that he would wear. However... <laughs> that was only on certain occasions for the most of the time he was walking around he had his blue jeans and and a blazer and that was about it um he oh and, and a cup of coffee everywhere he went <laughs> but you know that was he, he was just getting his company up off the ground that you can't you know there there are certain points yeah i'm not saying this to like run after people and be like you have jeans on you don't have a, a sport jet that's not the point but I would say, okay, I'm going to advertise my new company that's getting up off the ground. All right, Ron, throw the camera on me. And then he just has, like, tacky. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, guarantee that now. <laughs> What's up, guys? We're a new company. How you doing? Woo. Yeah. <laughs> and honestly, I wish the world wasn't that way. I wish it was people looked more inward and said, what's the intent? What's really in this person? not what are they wearing, but we happen to be visual people. And there is a basis on which we judge visually what we see. And it comes down to like when we're doing that comparison with Josh and his buddy. And now I'm gonna actually go and revamp some of my Facebook stuff and put a lot of it. I still may post occasionally a picture of me and my buddies playing in, in our band, but it's generally well, going to be mostly. Let me let me just quickly interject real quick. I have a lot of pictures in my feed of me just in normal situations, and mm -hmm. and people will actually like that because it shows that you're a real person. But your main header and your main presentation bar should be professional. Mm -hmm. Like I just saw, funny enough, uh, I am looking at Facebook because I have double monitors because. I'm weird like that. Maybe I like computers too much. And I use double monitors to work and do video editing, which I, I'm not sure if you do, Josh. I see that Chris changed. So I got three monitors. I do three monitors. <laughs> All right. Um, so you beat me by one. I'm going to have to go out and get Got a one up. There you go. All right. What were you going to say about me, Kareem? Well, one, I have to get a new graphics card to go against Josh here. But. I see you change your cover photo to that Bob Proctor one. Maybe I can share uh, the screen. Well, yeah, I had Slipknot Live up there, and I, I just – it was just such an important day in my life, and I really uh, – yeah. No, that's fine. Like, I'm not I'm not picking on anybody. I, 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 uh, I started making Canvas. I made – I got I like graphics. This. Yeah. And I like that. Very good. I started getting into Canva. My friend Stefan, who was a guest on here, he, he's busy now. He'll be back. He was showing me some of his graphics, and I said, oh, that looked real good. I wanted to do that. That was kind of my prerogative. 
can you go to his uh, his main Facebook? I want to see how this is presented in his Facebook. Stefan? No, me, I think. Yeah, or, Damien. Uh, Chris? Yeah, Chris. Or Damien's my first name. But yeah. I just was reading it off the screen. You guys can call me anything you want. See, I think that. <laughs> that looks great. <laughs> but then there's pictures of me with my guitar and stuff too, right? And then yeah, stuff. like down here and um, – don't want to portray uh, alcohol or anything, so I will. Yeah, so. I should I should take the cognac off. <laughs> but, but I was celebrating New Year's and a change, and I was like, I was happy to get that bottle of Hennessy, and it was undrank, and it just, you know, so yeah. No, it, it's it's, f- it's fine. I was just gonna say I got really big into to making graphics. Uh, made some graphics for Francis, and then I saw he just had changed that. Funny enough. I was like, oh, wow, that looks really good, Chris. Thank you. And I think that's just uh, a perfect example now. I, I look at that profile and I have to do some work on mine and say, wow, you can really change who people think or change people's perception of you in 10 to 20 seconds. Yep. Literally by clicking upload and then clicking on a, a photo and then clicking upload again and then clicking on another photo. Yep. Totally it's, agree with that. it's crazy. It's crazy how the world works. It is. I think it goes down to, if you know who Tony Robbins mentor is, he, he's an old funny guy named Jim Rohn. And one of his big things was, if you invest more time in yourself and your job, you'll be more successful. Like, what does that mean? And, and he's not saying like you go to work and hang out and don't, but he said, if you invest more in your personal presentation and that goes with everything, how you carry yourself, how you act, how you talk to people, how you relate to people, the kind of impressions you make, then you will be more successful. And he also made a, another distinct point that when people say, oh, I'm getting 20 bucks an hour or 30 or four, that's not really, that's not really true. If that was true, they just send it to you in the mail. That's your current value to the market. And that's based on how you dressed, how you talk, the different skills you have. I'm not just going to say, well, if you, if you do a bad job, you know, that, that, that's an excuse for it. But it's definitely a point to make that you can increase your income just by increasing the way that you speak, the way that you present yourself, the way that you look on camera. And funny enough, I, since I'm in public speaking, I was asking about keynote speaker events and eventually that would be my goal to get paid for them. I was like, wow, they'll they'll give me that much just to talk in in front of a group of people. And I forget the, the actual, figure and I'm not doing it yet, but it just amazed me that by just changing your presentation, you could change your whole lifestyle. And then the great thing about that is you can go back to being who you are and you can do more of that. If I, if me and Chris get successful, then I can be in the band that I'm in. He can do his music thing more so than not. And then just for an hour or two a day, you got to throw down and then look nice. And that's the awesome thing. If you work on yourself and do a little bit of this now, it's like the Jimmy John sign I saw. If you do the things when you have to do them, then you can do the things you want to when you want to do them. So I ran it on for a long time. Uh, You guys can go ahead. Well, a successful person does make adjustments and they do over and above the things that unsuccessful people weren't willing to do. Yep, that's right. And I mean, you look back at uh, Johnny Carson. Oh, I love him. Uh, he came out and before doing every monologue, his signature was his golf swing. Yep. Now, I actually know that Johnny Carson never shot a scratch game. Uh, we saw him live. My ex-husband met him in the driving range, and he was hooked in them left and right. That he really wasn't a very good golfer. 
but it was a passion of his, and he he used to play a couple rounds of golf a week and just more or less let his hair down. But uh, he would definitely come on the Tonight Show in a coat and tie and dressed uh, in a suit and take his golf swing anyway. <laughs> it, it was just what made him seem public, you know, that he was attainable, he was reachable. Yeah. Do you remember so, um, Bob Burns, Francis? Bob Burns. Wasn't it Bob? No, it was uh, the guy, the late night guy who was always smoking the Cuban cigars. Who was that? Um, George Burns. George, George Burns. Burns. Thank you, Marsha. Yes, George Burns. I loved him too. He's an awesome guy. George Great stuff. Gracie Allen. Yep. And actually, I was going to ask you, Francis. So you worked for Earl Nightingale. How did, and I haven't seen one picture of Earl Nightingale where he doesn't look professional, funny enough. How did he present himself in the office, maybe as opposed to when you guys were just hanging out? Uh, just hanging out, he always wore a, a, a jacket. <laughs> okay. He, he dressed very much like you're dressed now, Kareem. Oh, wow. That he always had, might not have a tie on. He might have the tie off or pulled down and not knotted up. <laughs> he might have his collar unbuttoned. But he always had it back on. He always had his shoes polished. Uh, I could put my lipstick on in his shoes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and he was always well managed. Cool. Well, it's been a good show. I really understand the importance of, of this now and why people pro will gravitate towards those who have a pleasing appearance to them or it's something that they can easily identify with or easily relate to. You know? I think it's just the psychology to if you see oh, it was always spraying his mouth yeah he was addicted to the stuff banaka you mean he always had a breath freshener oh yes oh boy and before anybody came in uh before he went out to to lunch or whatever you'd say his see him spray his his breath, and he might be going out for fish, but he was going to have fish with fresh breath. That's, <laughs> I think that's a little crazy, but hey, if that's, that's always a good prerogative because you never know who you're going to meet on a lunch date and you don't want to have bad breath. I can understand. Even though I wouldn't, I don't do that personally. But I keep deodorant in my office, well, in my cubicle, and and I make sure that it doesn't uh, smell bad. I don't smell bad. All right, Ron. Thank you very much for coming. Definitely, you had some great input. You look very professional today. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no. Thanks, Ron. <laughs> yeah, I got. I got to go up and uh, hit the hay. So. Uh, I'll see y'all all late all right. next week. Right. Good night, brother. Good night, buddy. Good night, angels on your pillow, Ron. Good night. Nah. But yeah, it's just if you walk into a Starbucks and if you, you see different people, how they're dressed, and sometimes you think like, is that, and sometimes I'll even think this, is that guy because of what he's wearing more successful? Than, and it might not even be true. But uh, that's just the psychology. Sometimes it gets you. And it's all about psychology, at least in my book. Well, I have my my fuzzy pajama bottoms, and I I love wearing them. They're comfortable. I go to Walmart, and I see people in fuzzy pajama bottoms and a T-shirt. 
<laughs> well, that's Walmart. That's cool. And you just are surprised at the people when you're people watching that you will see in Walmart or even in a a bus depot that I've seen people in fuzzy pajama bottoms and a t-shirt getting on a, a airplane or getting on a bus to travel. I thought, well, now that's built for comfort. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, no, definitely. If you're good, if I was going to get on a bus or if I was going to travel a long trip, I'm not going to have like a suit jacket tile all the time because that would get uncomfortable, especially if you're on a plane for more than like three, four hours, you're not going to be having necessarily a good time. Yeah. You know, that I could see wearing a, a nice pair of sweats and uh, a, a hoodie, you know, with the, oh, yeah. With the hoodie down or something like that, not looking like Jack the Ripper or somebody, but <laughs> <laughs> oh, Francis, Jack the Ripper, <laughs> Leon, were you ever able to um, get your phone going? Hello, Leon. Okay. Just wanted to give that another shot. If you want to unmute, push star six. Is that how you unmute on Zoom, Kareem? Yes. Okay. And I just know because I've tried it. Called in with the phone and stuff. I have to see if there's a way also if you can change the one profile picture when you turn the camera off. Yeah. It'd be cool to have a picture of me up there instead of this anonymous. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think you guys all make really good points, especially Marsha, Josh, Francis, and Kareem and, and Ron. That uh, you know, we have a goal of reaching twenty-five thousand subscriptions by two thousand seventeen. And I look back at our older broadcasts and my older videos, and I'm like, okay, I'm in my band shirts and my chains and everything. And uh, it, I, I've made the transition successfully, but it took a lot to swallow that and because it's such it's it's such a big part of who I am that it was really hard because I didn't I didn't think I had to bend for you know someone else's what someone else thinks is acceptable or but when we're dealing with you know what we're doing and the things we're doing and the, the, the audience we want to attract it makes a lot of sense and well you know I also work uh, daily almost with the blind community. Uh, this is on the phone, Korean. And with the blind community, obviously. Can you mute uh, her, Korean, please? Pardon me? Do what? Oh, I thought Francis I. Francis is on the phone. Can you mute her? No, she was talking. She was talking. Well, I, that's why I didn't know, because she's so far away, I can't hear her. No, no, I don't think she is. It sounded like she was on the phone. No. Okay, can you hear me better now? Yes. Yeah, yeah no, she wasn't on. Uh, okay. No, I work almost daily in the blind community. And obviously, how you look, you could be dressed in a barrel, and it wouldn't matter to them who's going to see you, right? <laughs> But they can pick up in my voice uh, whether I'm having a good day or a bad day. Yeah. That yeah. If, I sign, if I sound like I'm forcing myself when I'm talking to them to be professional, they'll say, Miss Fran, are you having a bad day? And I'll say, well, no. Why would you say that? Well, you sound angry. Or you sound tired. I said, well, I didn't get a lot of sleep last night, but you are important to me. And it was important that I make our appointment and not, not put you off because of how much the importance is of your relationship to me. And I'm trying to help you to achieve. And so 
it's my dedication. I'm here for you. And they, you know, they say, well, we can tell when you're delivering a, a training or whatever that you sound totally different. And I said, well, if I'm not feeling good or my hair is not brushed that morning, even though I'm talking to a blind community where they're not going to see me, I know that when I look good, my hair's brushed, uh, I didn't get up and not brush my teeth and feel like the whole Polish army walked through it with their shoes off. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that you just make a better... You get this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just laughing at the expressions. Some yeah. of the expressions are like the whole, I'm like, what? She's just that cool, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, go ahead. I'm sorry, Francis. I apologize. No, I mean, it, it goes back to what Ron was saying. If you look good, you feel good. And if I'm even doing cold calls, which I haven't done in a while, because I went to... Um, email marketing and different transitions that I've made since I started uh, being online 15 years ago. But I will keep a mirror in front of my desk or a reflection of myself, not because I'm conceited, but because I want to know that if I look good, I'm going to put my best foot forward and I'm going to present whatever I'm talking to a new person about. I'm going to present it more professionally than if I'm in a, a nightgown, you know, or flannel, flannel, uh, I'm going to be more focused and just deliver better and have a better posture. Yep. I agree. That's why I'm in a button down. My hair is tied back. Yes. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I'm just going to have a heart attack. She's like, what? Who are, who are these people? Where did you pick the original host? No, no you I can ask Marcia how stubborn I am. Oh, boy. <laughs> he knows. Well, I will admit that, hey, when I'm in my classroom, I'm sitting here with my blue jeans or my pajamas on. <laughs> Sorry. No, but that's on the phone. That's fine. And you know what? I still feel good. So it doesn't really, it doesn't bother me one way or the other if uh, I have makeup on or if I don't have makeup on. If I feel good inside, then I know that what I have to say is going to be heard. Because I'm feeling good inside. And that's really basically, for me, I have to feel good about myself. Myself. And once I feel good about myself, whether I have my pajamas with rollers on, or, and, and by the way, I don't put rollers in my hair. I just brush it out. But nevertheless, whether or not I'm dressed up or not really doesn't have as much of uh, a profoundness on me as much as the fact that I feel good about myself inside. My confidence is there. That's what makes the difference for me. If I don't feel good about myself inside and I can bring it outside, well, then everybody else is going to feel that too. They're not going to see that I have confidence and they're not going to feel confidence in me. Why would they, right? But I have to feel good inside. Whether or not I have my makeup on or I have uh, clothes that the world isn't even able to see me in anyways because I'm not on video, <laughs> it's not going to matter. What matters is what I feel about myself inside. Yeah, that's definitely another good point that yes. even you can put on the suit, you can put on the tie, you can do all that stuff. You can master speaking skills. And actually, funny one thing is a lot of speaking programs I have a problem with because they teach a lot of public speaking skills, slow down, prepare your speech. That's all good stuff. That's fine. 
doesn't actually, in my opinion, make you the best speaker possible. What makes you the best speaker possible is actually doing the physical work in here to feel the right feeling when you give a speech. That's actually what makes a speech. Not necessarily so much of sitting there and practicing on note cards, which is fine. That's more fine tuning. But honestly, just getting in the right state of mind, state of being to actually give the speech makes the speech a whole lot different. And I have a couple of speeches on YouTube now that I think are good because I got in the right mood. I got up there and I did my thing at Toastmasters and I think they enjoyed it. That was very good. I saw that one and it was. Yes, it was, Kareem. Yeah. I'm working out. I'm trying to get up there with less. It's possible. It is. It is possible. I, uh, I think that it's very important as we do this show and as this show evolves that people see my transition from the way I used to look to on the show to now. And if I keep being consistent with this, I think anything they may have thought of me before based on how the, you know, the, the jewelry and all. Okay. And I think well, it'll, the, that opinion yeah. will will change, and people will go, "Okay, well, he loves metal. He's a musician, but he's also a serious entrepreneur." So, I, I completely agree with what I'm doing now. I agree as well, my friend. Yeah. Thanks, Maddie. Yeah, I I think you've grown tremendously, Chris. Thank you. Very appreciative. Yeah, I was really actually surprised that one day. I was like, wait, he has a button down. Who is this? Yeah. It makes sense to me, man. You know? so I just start doing it because I don't – I want this to be the revolution that we're seeking from it, Craig. Yeah, and actually I – I want to meet Josh one day and give him a hug and say, man, I just – you know, I can fly anywhere he is and watch one of his presentations – and who knows, maybe he'll bring us up on stage and go, well, these are my two great friends, Chris and Kareem Mays from the Entrepreneur Power Hour. That's Let's how do I it. got it. Yeah, man. Exactly. <laughs> exactly, man. I'm going to get like a plane ticket. I'm like, thanks, Josh. Where are we going? Yeah. <laughs> Let's go somewhere tropical. Yeah, where there's lots of beautiful Colombian women. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, man. I have a story to tell you about Colombia. Off. Go ahead. No, no, off air. Okay. Uh, <laughs> nothing like that. Nothing like that. It's just uh, something I want to tell you about Columbia. I've never okay. been to Columbia either. Oh, okay. But yeah, what I was going to say, the whole dynamics changed. We're dressed up. I'm not in a t-shirt. He's not in the band. We have better quality with Zoom now. Yes. In addition to that, I just changed my Facebook up. So that's definitely, we changed our Facebooks. We're using different language, I'm noticing. Throw that up on the screen for us, Kareem. There's more people on the panel. Okay. Yeah, that's the years, bro. Okay. So, if you guys remember what I, it used to look like, I had that one picture, which was okay, but I look kind of mad in it. Now yeah, I look, this looks great. Yeah, it does, man. <laughs> yeah, like, it does. It looks good. We have backdrops now. We have better quality. I changed the intros up. I don't know if you guys. Yeah, they're really nice. I've been using them like crazy and to edit our videos with. I mean, I can say that the first time I created the intros, I, I liked them and the outros. I thought, I'm like, oh, this is pretty good. But I'm wondering if I could do better. And I, and I started studying some After Effects and I started looking at different video things. I'm like, this can't be that hard. Video editing, I'm not going to say is easy because there's definitely people who are professionals and have gone to school. But it's not entirely impossible or that hard either. And I found some programs and some, some, some stuff that I could work with. And I created an awesome intro, an intro that I'm happy with for the power hour and a nice outro. Yeah, it's really good. That it's really uh, good. maybe I can show you. Uh, yeah, roll it. All right. Roll it, B. Am I rolling it? Okay. You're rolling it. <laughs> Yeah, actually, I had your uh, your banner up, and I had my. I like that banner. Okay. Yeah. 
Let's roll the intro real quick. It's not long. It's 40 seconds. I don't know if you can hear the sound. No, we can't hear the sound. It looks great. We can still see it in that. I like you know, it. It don't matter. We'll do it I, I was experimenting for a program that me and Chris were part of. I'm like, I wonder how these turn out if I try what them. What is that ad code? The graphics were excellent. Yeah. Hey, I got I got to take this call, guys. But, um, I'll have to jump off. Okay, buddy. We'll Thanks see you next so much, week. Josh. Brother, if you can make it. Thank you for being here. We love you. See you again, Josh. Take care. So that's, that's just the intro, real quick. I think Aloha. Hey, the islands. The island. <laughs> and here's the. Hey. Should I play the outro? Yeah, play the outro. <laughs> All right. How do you like puzzles? Yeah, this is really cool. I liked this. It does move a little bit. Oh, what the heck? Yeah, we got to get those ads out of there, bud. By the way, some of the videos you uploaded when I was in there today doing some editing, I listed some the one entrepreneurs just ask as public because you had it as private. Yeah, I was going to throw some tags on there. but that's the Oh, I'm sorry. It's all good. No, I can still do it. Okay. I just and like I'm, this ending. I, I uploaded the what is your my what is your why video today, and I added the intro and the outro to mine and so that was the annotations and stuff too. Yeah, this looks really awesome, dude. So yeah, just it's in my opinion, and what it's a whole different uh, it's a whole different world from me and the Call of Duty ghost shirt and and Chris and what we used to be to who we are now. Rick and Cheryl, uh, we're talking about how to maintain a professional business presence online, which is interesting, and we're comparing some of the ways we used to be and some on how we are now and what we're doing. What do you guys think about my new getup? <laughs> <laughs> they don't have a camera. I couldn't get my Zoom to work. Um, uh, yeah, it might not work. Yeah, you might have to get Google Chrome or Safari. We have Google Chrome. I'm on a Chrome. It, uh, but the Zoom won't work on The that. Zoom doesn't work. <laughs> huh. I don't know. Well, that's messed up. I got to go on my Mac. I I actually have a Zoom account with a picture on it, but I don't know. Every, I don't know what I have to do to get that going when I, Maybe you I know, get some. into your place. Research, research, however it's pronounced. Is that Mar Marsha talking? Yes. Uh huh. You sound like you have a cold in your ear. Yeah, I actually do. Oh. I was sick, Chris. <laughs> No, well, you know what? Drink, drink some hot whiskey. Uh, so known as a hot toddy, some lemon, a little bit of lemon and some whiskey, and take, drink some mm. juice and eat some good food and get some sleep and we'll feel better. My grandmother used to give me hot toddy. Or even honey and lemon and leave the whiskey out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you gotta, you gotta have nah. some whiskey in there. Come on. Well, I mean, you could just do OJ. That's fine too. <laughs> My, yeah, they're called hot toddies, I think. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. In the family I come from, there's a certain time where whiskey is called for. If you don't feel good, then definitely grab and bust it off the gym team. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. They mm -hmm. knock you off. Good stuff. <laughs> but yeah, we're just talking about, you know, the way that we understand to be taken seriously, that we have to dress nice and have a professional. Uh, appearance and things like that and a professional attitude and use proper language and all those kinds of things so. what do you guys I think, think yeah that's right uh, I, I think your appearance helps you know it depends on who you're marketing to like if you're marketing to a bunch of punk rockers then I guess I would spike my bald head or something I don't know <laughs> but you know, it does. depends on your audience yeah you know, exactly yeah. yeah. But if I was marketing, yeah. pay me what I'm worth, I wouldn't be like, yeah, what's up, dude? You know, <laughs> I mean, maybe. But if I'm marketing the power hour, or pay me what I'm worth. I want to look like I'm honoring my worth. <laughs> and yeah. then someone's yeah. like, oh, yeah. that's point. my teacher. I want that dude to teach me because he looks like he knows what's up. 
and he looks like he does personal development. Or at least he's really good at faking it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Except, uh, no. He's developed. He's developed. <laughs> Is that how you market when you're in the mosh pit? <laughs> <laughs> I don't mark. I don't market when I'm in the mosh pit. When I'm, <laughs> I guess I market getting oh, people up. I'm like, sorry. sorry. There you go. Just be <laughs> handing out pay me when I'm worth books. Hey, uh, 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 here's a book. Are you going to read this? No. After they hit me, it's like, ow. Like you're crowd surfing. Here, does, does anybody want to read this? There's a good yeah. exercise on finding your skills. Here's a skill. I didn't die in this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I actually have the background of the Power Hour on the um, logo that you made me. Yep. I made it a desktop. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it looks good. Well, I had my son's ex fiance here visiting the other day, and I had that. Just my desktop turned on, so I wasn't distracted by work, visiting with her. And she looked at that, and she says, Doggone, Mama, you know some foxy-looking guys. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> what the heck? Great on. We got people. We got women chasing us. Oh, boy. And I said, who's that? And, oh, the guys that are on your screen. I said, oh. <laughs> Chris and Kareem. <laughs> <laughs> Am I gonna have a stalker now, Francis? Do yeah. I have to? Well, do I gotta call Francis, the police? That's not oh. business professional. You should have been like, they're all about business. They don't joke around. Hey, speak for yourself, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's just Chris and Kareem. I said they're the. DJs at night or on Tuesday nights, uh, the Power Hour. Indeed. Oh well, I should meet them. And I said, "Well, come on the Power Hour. <laughs> you're just down to earth guys, and you can talk to them just like you're talking to me any Tuesday night." Awesome, thank you. I said I'll be happy to give you a personal introduction, and you can talk your little heart out. Just have a ball. Is this a younger lady? Uh, let's see. She is 27. No, I take that back. No, she's 30 now. Okay, well, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, she is, she is 30. Right on. Yeah, bring her on. We'd love to meet her and have her on here and uh, get her insights into what she thinks. Uh, is she an entrepreneur as well, Francis? No, not. That's fine. Advocate, but she, she can still come on here and and uh, curious, and I, I yeah. talk what kind of topics and what have you, and she absolutely. Uh, she's she's interested in becoming an entrepreneur. Perfect. See, that's something uh, we're going for too. I don't want to just say, oh, this is for entrepreneurs or accomplished. Yeah, if someone just like, I wonder what entrepreneurs are. Isn't it just yep. Bill Gates and the creator of it? And like, no. Her, yeah. She can come on any Tuesday and just feel comfortable that no yeah. one judges her and she can ask any question about any topic. Yep. Yeah, I'm Very down awesome. for that. Yes, me too. Love Thank you. And oh, right said, on. Well, after hours, we you can stay for the after hours. And cool. when we're off screen and we're not filming, I said, Chris and Kareem both play guitar. They're, they're members of the band. Really? And she, and she said, wow, pictures are deceiving. You'd never know. Well, she, when, I, when I go back to the way I usually look, she'll know. And I said, this is the persona they're trying to yes. market. I said, but to know them as individuals, they're as down to earth as you are. Yeah. yeah. No, people are like, Kareem, I, I tell them I play music. They're like, are you in a jazz band? I'm like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> and obviously they don't know what genre, and that's fine. 
I'm not trying to broadcast what I'm doing, you know, per, per se. But what I'm, what I'm trying to do at that point is convince them that I'm there to be a professional. And then by being a professional, I can afford the guitars and the amps to keep jamming with my band. Yes. That's why I do it, essentially. Music equipment's expensive. And, yeah, well, oh, yeah. Connie is a avid tattoo person. She's got tattoos everywhere. Cool. And I said, well, you wouldn't look at me and say, that little old lady has tattoos, but you know I do. Cool. I like that. I want to meet this person. She seems like a really nice, really nice girl. Connie's cool. You do. That's my mom's name, too, Connie. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. But well. I got to tickle when she says, Wow, you know some foxy dudes, Mama. <laughs> I looked up and I didn't know who she's talking about. No, oh, I, boy. Those are my boys. That's a Chris there and that's Kareem there. And there's a, the people that I talk to every Tuesday night on the Power Hour. And then they do the radio show. Oh, they got radio shows. I said, and they're both in a band. And. I said, you can't tell a book by its cover. You just got to meet the dudes and, and encounter them. Thank you. After hours, and I said, you'll soon realize that they put their pants on one leg at a time like everybody else. Nothing to be at all afraid of or intimidated by. They're just two duels in a loose mood, just grooving it. Yeah. Well, we appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. I didn't understand that saying either, but yeah, thanks. Uh, are we still taping? Yes, we are yeah. still recording, but uh, it's getting right. at the top of the hour, and I do have some things I do want to do before bed. You know, it's the Entrepreneur Power Hour, but sometimes we go over because we, we'd start later. Somebody would would come in later, just, you know, happenstance. And I definitely want to get everybody's perspective. Absolutely. Is there any closing thoughts? Aha moments, closing thoughts from anybody tonight? Doing the soul thing, any aha moments? Yep. What did you guys take away from tonight's show? Takeaways. Marsha, we'll start with you. <laughs> you're going to start with me? Yes. Oh, my, you're, you're, you're one of our favorite yeah. ladies. Of course, what the heck could I take away from this show except for that I'm with a bunch of guys <laughs> and sorry, Fran. Cheryl and Francis, ladies too, that I know very well, that I enjoy the company. I enjoy listening to the Entrepreneur Power Hour and all the perspectives here, just as I enjoy all of you in my classes. Thank you. So... That's my perspective tonight. It was a great conversation. Awesome. What about you, Miss Frances Richardson? Oh, I've always got two cents to add to everything. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I think the reason my husband and my uh, caregivers keep me so well fed is because they figure if I'm putting something in her mouth, she won't talk so much. <laughs> wow. Uh, I, I don't think that's true. No. I'm well fed. I'm well fed, I must say. What did you uh, uh, take away from the show? I find that we have a lot of similarities in, in viewpoints and um, I find that those that don't think exactly in tune with everybody. There's a definite level field, a playing ground in the Entrepreneur Power Hour every single week that it's a very safe haven to be heard and, and to listen. Yes. Uh, Fran, I'm going to just, oh, no, someone got it. No, it's definitely, that's the whole point, because the program we were in previously, they, 
the some of the moderators and said speak up speak up and you wanted to speak up but then if you said the wrong thing then you were worried are they going to come back and say well that's not right or you can't say that or give you a hard time and for me if i'm coming to do personal development especially someone doing personal development may not all be that perfect and i know i wasn't if i say some of the things that i think are wrong or some things it's not their job to condemn someone for saying the wrong thing. It's their job to point it out and say, maybe could you look at that from a different perspective and help them out and or not judge them. And I I believe if you're going to have real learning and we know that from pay me what I'm worth, you got to do in a judgment free environment. You can't sit there and say like, Oh, don't say that or don't be negative because bad and good experiences are part of life. If you take out half of the equation, you're not really being honest with yourself and being the utmost honest is kind of what we do here. Even though, yeah, I I'm talking about being professional. I got the jacket and the button down, but I'm not, I'm no holds bar on what I'm saying. Yeah, me neither. And, um, I think what I took away tonight was what just taking my, uh, Josh's suggestion seriously and really running with what he said and, and moving myself into that on uh, that mindset where I understand how important it is to maintain a professional appearance for this show and, and for when I do f- meeting my future friends and family that I meet through this program and uh, just how important it is to have that so that people take me seriously. So. Uh, so what I took away tonight. <sighs> I just took away that in, it's I guess, about a year old or close to a year old, the amount of transformation we made, the amount of views, subs, just everything is pretty amazing if you look at different YouTubers and how people have come up. And just the, the backdrops, the intros, the outros, the transformation on Facebook, the transformation just in us personally, like internally, it's pretty amazing. And I can see that not only from this, but my pay me what I'm worth blog and just how I interact with people in general. I feel to, like, yeah, I still goof off off camera and I still have fun, but now I know who, what I'm doing, my purpose, at least one of my purposes in life. And I'm approaching it it professionally but i'm also approaching it with a burning desire like napoleon all talks about so i want to thank marcia chris francis definitely leon even though uh, unfortunately rick and cheryl it's always nice to have you guys Uh, i want to do a shout out to bill maybauer who is at the doctors i hope he's doing okay yes and and cedric who's at the doctors they want to get on and definitely always a big thank you to Ron and Josh for their great insight. We will see you next week on the Entrepreneur Power Hour, guys. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Aloha. 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 Aloha.